Hello everybody, today we're going to look at the tangent function and but in the diagram you can see in front of you there is the image there that is what the, the graph of y equals tan of x or of tan of theta is going to look like. Now I want to just quickly explain where this comes from so if we should already know from previous videos that tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta and you should also know from previous videos that sine theta is your y coordinate as we move around the unit circle and the cosine theta is your x coordinate so if we imagine that we are pretty much flat okay and we have theta equals zero well then the tan is going to be uh, well sine theta sorry is going to be zero and cosine theta is going to be one. So therefore tan theta is gonna be zero. But as we move around and as we adjust our theta and we get closer and closer to 90 degrees, that ratio of opposite over adjacent or sine theta over cosine theta is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's going to go up. And that is exactly what the diagram looks like. We start at zero here, look. And as we go closer and closer to pi over 2 or 90 degrees, it goes up and up and up. But the only problem is it, we can't actually ever get past um, that 90 degree mark because that 90 degrees going back to our little diagram here, okay, we are going to have the opposite. We're going to have that tan theta at this point is going to be 1 divided by 0. And that is infinitely large. The question really is how many zeros can I fit into a 1? And of course, it's as many as you like. It's infinitely large. So that is why we have a function that goes incredibly large very, very quickly. But at that particular point, pi over 2 or 90 degrees, we have a math error here, don't we? It is discontinuous. This is known as an asymptote line, a line we do not cross. But as we go do cross it in terms of feature at least, we have a problem because we're going to have a positive number and a negative number for our sine theta and cosine theta. A positive divided by a negative is of course a negative number and that's why we start back again down here as we go through uh, and past that pi over two mark. But as we bring the function round and we carry on going around again and again and again, we're gonna get back to that same old problem we had at uh, theta is equal to zero. We're gonna end up with a very, very small, in, in fact, a zero sine theta coordinate. So we're gonna have zero over one again at that point, which brings us back to zero. And this repeats itself in the third quadrant. When we, Once we get around to the third quadrant of the um, coordinate plane, we're going to have a negative divided by a negative, and that is going to be positive, and which is why we continue exactly as we did in the first quadrant between pi and 3 pi over 2. This repeats and repeats and repeats, and this is why the tangent graph looks as it does. It is discontinuous. It has asymptotes here and here. And everywhere, in fact, every pi radians or 180 degrees. So the key features. Well, if we have a function, a tan function, and we have the same things going on as we had with the sine function and cosine function, um, we don't really have an amplitude because this is not a wave and only waves really have this amplitude. But we do have a stretch. Each point is stretched uh, parallel to the y-axis by whatever magnitude A takes. We do move the principal axis though, just like we usually move around Y equals zero or the X axis, this will move up or down depending on what D is defined to be. We can move this to the right or to the left dependent on C. If we have a minus five, it moves everything to the right five places. Um, and we can reduce or enlarge the period of the graph in exactly the same way as we could before by considering the number there, right? But rather than working out the period by being two pi divided by that number, because our original period or point of repetition is only pi, well, it's only pi that divides by that number rather than two pi. So those are the things you need to know about uh, the tangent graph. Let's go on now and look at some examples. So Without using technology, we're going to sketch a graph between 0 and 3 pi this time. Well, what's happened to the original? Well, it has moved and it has moved left 
and it has moved left by pi over four. And that is really all we need to know. Now, going back to the original, let's just remind ourselves. So all of this is shifted to the left pi over four. So rather than going through the point zero, this has moved to the left. Um, the principal axis has moved to the left. Everything has moved to the left pi over four. So let's try and replicate that now in our diagram. So it often helps to draw in the um, uh, asymptote lines first. So usually that is going to be at pi over two, but if we move to the left, well, that asymptote line now is going to be at pi over four. And it repeats itself every pi still we haven't done anything to the period of the graph so this next one will be at five pi over four and the one after that well this will be in another pi's time so nine pi over four right and we're getting close of course 12 uh, pi over four is our sort of finish point which is three pi as designated by the boundary set to us in the question and now it's just a case of drawing the function itself so perhaps it is easier to go through the whole uh, sort of periods that we can see on the graph before we do anything else because we already know exactly what that's going to look like. And um, we're definitely going to go through uh, the um, x-axis in our last one there and just continue off that way. And, of course, back originally, well, we would be kind of starting this at uh, minus pi over 4, but we'll continue it on from that point. So that is our first example finished. In the next one, we have got to explore and draw the uh, tangent of, uh, sorry, y equals tan 2x. This time we have a negative and positive boundary. So let's draw the axes just like this. Um, of course, the two is reducing the period of the graph. So rather than um, uh, repeating itself every pi, we're re repeating ourselves every pi over two. And everything is contracting in towards that center point, right? So we're moving in those directions, okay, left and right, if you consider the negative and positive axes. So again, first thing to do, I think, is to draw those asymptote lines. If we are reducing this amplitude rather than being at pi over two, just like in the last example, in fact, we're going to start with pi over 4. And the next one, therefore, is going to be at 3 pi over 4 because it repeats itself every pi over 2. That means that our sort of midpoint there, look, that's going to be the pi over 2. And we can just half all of the values, really, from the uh, first graph. Um now then, I, we won't get as far as this because it's going to be over our pi. But if I was to sort of carry on, I would have this at 5 pi over 2. And that kind of helps me to know that the middle of that is going to be our pi. And that's where we're going to stop. So if I'm drawing some of this function, we'll, we'll do the other half in just a moment. It's going to look like this. And it's going to stop there, isn't it? Because we only want that boundary up to pi. Let's get rid of this last one. It was useful. It did help us. But we're going to be stopping there. Right. This is kind of going to carry on on the other side. OK. So as, as we, and we know this because it repeats itself every pi over 2. And the difference between minus pi over, so excuse me, minus pi over 4. The difference between minus pi over 4 and pi over 4 is, of course, pi over 2. And we can go back again and do the next one, minus 3 pi over 4. And it's going to look very, very similar to the last side. It's not a reflection, mind. Okay, the same thing, though, is happening. We're going to be going off like this. There we go. And, of course, just like the last one, we're sort of, st well, our start point is minus pi. So that is a well, not a very good picture, but it does show you the key features of the graph. That is what y equals tan 2x is going to look like. Okay, from here, you should be able to do some of these questions now. Have a go at these. Good luck.